Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to have the chance to share with all of you how to handle with a small data uh, and also big noise. So, when I, so we, we all know the MDI is proposed by the former America president, Obama. So the key issue is how to make the materials research use the half time and at a half cost. So from talk about this data and the knowledge, the key issue is how we can gain knowledge from data. So now we are talking about the machine learning, but actually, as I mentioned here, learning can be done by individual human beings, especially genius. And the moment, of course, can all end by machine that we should have joined. The human being, we utilize all the machine, the software, computer to learn all the data together. So the, the learn's purpose is to understanding why things happen. This is for explanation. To predict what will happen. This is for predict for ah, the first one for explanation, the first the second one for pre prediction. And now the third one purpose is to manage things that are happening. This is for control. Now we have uh, a lot of say, for those uh, for control the cars, airplanes, say, ships, and so on. So the development of nature science is uh, continuous and the endless progress that the human beings observe nature behavior, develop learning models, and then gain knowledge. I put here Newton's say, figure here. So we all know the simple is say Newton's law, F equal MA is not derived, is actually proposed by Newton based on his is a observation, it's not himself, it's all human being, okay? Uh, we observe the nature behavior, then summarize them, then gain the knowledge, okay? Then gain knowledge. We use knowledge, we express the knowledge by using a simple equations. So data driven the formula discovery. Now we are also trying to develop some algorithm and our program to find the formulas. So we can see historically, most of the important is the data and the formula, mostly are data driven, of course. Now, as an expert, we can you see, use expert-based uh, formula discovery to gain that you see, direct, you see, get uh, some knowledge based on some principles. But here, at least uh, most of them, they are really, we get this uh, from data, from data. Now, okay, I put here you see, as one example, I'm working on mechanical behavior of materials. So the failure, the major failure mode is a fatigue failure. So fatigue failure, there is a famous is a law we call Paris law. The Paris law for fatigue crack groups. So they, you can see that so here is the, the vertical line that says the crack is a gross rate. So there is a stress intensity factor region then Paris, based on data, he proposed uh, this simple equation, the power law equation, it basically is a power law. So now at the moment, the academic and also industry are widely used the Paris law, okay, in the theoretical study and also in industry practice. So another is also very, very famous is a question, especially in the metals industry, all the materials community metals, okay, metal. Now that we call that is a whole pitch equation. Now we know almost of our widely used metallic is a materials, 
is for structure. Okay, that's what usually we call that the structure of materials. We the human being utilize their mechanical property in our daily life, industry, and so on. So there are the most we know that you see the metallic materials are polycrystalline the <coughs> materials. They are not a single crystal, not like is a semiconductor. We widely use the single crystal. Now here is a polycrystal. The hole and the patch, those are two scholars. They are individual developed. They found this equation, all the mechanical property uh, will get better if when the green size get smaller and smaller, they get this is purely say, from data. More interestingly, the later on, the whole page equation can be explaining the by some theoretical you say, modeling. If they are based on the you say, dislocation, Modeling, we now we have a different model. We use the different model, we can derive the whole pitch equation. The whole pitch equation is the further we have the equation from data. Then later on, we have the theoretical is improvement. Okay, we can approve this equation are correct. So the entire is a metallic industry, what they are doing, they actually they are doing is try to make those is a metal, metallic materials, how to reduce their green size. If they can reduce their green size to lower the micrometer, then they have a super mechanical properties. Those materials will have that super is a material property. Uh, except the creep, okay? If we want to design some materials uh, Against the creeper failure, we it is better still use the single crystal. But uh, for other materials, it's mechanical properties. Okay, they are also related to reduce the green size, make the green size smaller. The smaller, the better. Of course, now academically, we also have fun. If the green size is too small, then we have a we call that a reversed power page equation, but we are not uh, talking about it because uh, to make uh, such a so small nanometer scales, you say, those uh, construction materials is not so easy. Okay, now we are still, you see, the entire e metallic industry is still working on this. Okay, how to make this, you say, D small, the green size small. Now we all know that the AI, artificial intelligence, is a new powerful tool so I draw, you see, these figures here. Now, no matter you work on, you see, which kind of materials, you have your so many, many different tools. That is uh, wonderful. But now, where I, where you see, we would like, you see, you to, uh, to learn another new tool to, you say how to, you say how to, you say, how to use this new tool, put this, you say, AI, machine learning into your toolbox. So the fast developed data science, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and the materials and the mechanics I call that informatics, now we are widely known. So materials informatics is developed so fast. I see, you see this uh, milestone, that is, uh, we call you see, this AlphaGo. This is software, okay, we all know that. You see a one APP software can be the, the champion, the world champion of game Go. Okay, so even you take a look, you see this one, the updated version, they call AlphaGo Zero. You read this, you see the title of this article. They call the mastering the game of Go without the human knowledge. But then before in the old, you see, the original is a, our system go in that software. They have used a lot of, you say, the human beings experience uh, in their database. But for this alpha go zero, they only know human being only just teaching the machine how, what's the rule of the game of go. Then the two machine 
they were picky to each other. The finally, after they trained, then they can say the Alpha Go Zero software will win. This is the old version. Also, I like this is a paper. I like the title. They call lessons learned. This is about the say medical doctor. How to skin? You say that a medical doctor how to diagnose? You say this skin. Okay, the human being's skin. So if you read this paper, then you will find that they have a very large uh, database. They all pictures about the human being's skin. Okay, then the medical is a doctor, the skin doctor. When they diagnose that, they say your skin. When they treat that, they convert that to a imaging process. Okay, they just uh, make a comparison, make a comparison. Okay, then they will know what kind of, we you see your skin has which kind of problem, then they will give you, you see, a, a medical treatment. So I also like this one. This one is, uh, they talk about the learning from failure. Learning from failure, they talk about this article, talk about uh, they want to synthesize some uh, materials, okay, some materials. Now, sometimes uh, they are successful, sometimes they say they are fair. They want to find uh, at which condition, what's the boundary between the successful and the fair, okay? So if you want to say, find this boundary, so you need the data of the fair the data, the failure data. So to data size or you, only data I will talk about is whether your data is reliable or not. Without not means is well, we are not separate successful data or failure data. We are more focused on whether your data are reliable or not. So this is a new okay article. It about as a title is mentioned. This is a mobile robotics chemist. So that is our goal. As I will say mentioned that now currently we do a adaptive design but actually it's not a cross loop. But in this article, they talk about how to cross loop to do this is a material is a development. So instead of here, they have a lot of uh, machine, uh, the other robotics, okay? The big one and the small one, okay? Those then, they give them a recipe, then they will fabricate this is a materials. Uh, then they were testing the materials if they are not uh, successful, they will recommend what is the next recipe where they will synthesize. Okay, what's the new materials for the new design? Okay, we will mention that. We are try to I try to say develop say, all the similar <laughs> this uh, lab uh, at the Shanghai University, but we are still say, uh, working on this. We are still working on. So now this I just mentioned, okay, now we are in materials community. I call that is a materials informatics. I also working on the mechanical behavior of materials. So I also in the mechanics community, I I can say call them we say mechanics informatics. Okay. The materials mechanics informatics actually integrates artificial intelligence to material science and the engineer, or maybe to mechanics, okay? This uh, will show that it's adaptive materials mechanics because it's a discovery. So here is uh, in the center is a domain knowledge. No matter you work on which kind of materials, so your knowledge is extremely important. It's a hub, okay? It's a really the hub, the domain knowledge. But in addition to that, we are, suggest you to do a, you see, a data driving, to have the database. Of course, you have your you see, goal. Then those data should come from experiment or competition. Okay, that is a, we are very, very important. Okay, where those data can come from experiment or competition. Once you have this data, you will do a data Processing, then do I say um, build up a machine learning model? Then you have to evaluate this model. Then, based on the model's results, you will make a suggestion what's the next 
experiment or competition. What I should do? Okay. Now, based on those, you say the competition from the machine learning model that you will carry on. The next is a wrong is an experiment or competition. Then if you reach your goal, then you will come out. If not reach your goal, then your data will you say be put into the database again. Then you do this is a okay, iteration. We do the iteration. So because you say our goal may be changed. If this year our goal is at this level, next year we should put it, say our level is a high. So this one is a dynamic, it's a never end. You see, it's a dynamic, never end. So, so let's talk about this a little bit, you say machine learning. Machine learning, you already say, talk to those, those computers, say scientists, they were tell me, okay, those they say they treat that system as a gold, they say black box. So they have a input variables, they have output. Actually, the output variable is actually you provide you should know that. Then you, I usually say I say machine learning says so that's estimation. I put a hack there. Okay. But anyway, so there are the key issue is you have hundred is a variable. You have a lot of you say, oh there is a wrong I should put it this is should be edge. But I'm sorry for the mistake. So there are, you have a hundred say variable. So those hunting say variables you say make those have an intrinsic is a area. They have an intrinsic area. Here, there's some people tell me to the stock market, the intrinsic area is a very, very large. Okay, they could be rich, you say 200 is a percent. But uh, we are doing science and the engineer. We say, we are control the experimental competition. Then we can make this, I said, uh, approximately equal to zero. It's not that the case. So we can make it as small as possible. We try our best to reduce this area. Okay, to reduce this area. So there is a big difference. So in my whole life, I'm working on is it something is really true or not. We believe something. Okay, but in machine learning, it's not that case. Machine learning believe the real function. You never get it. You never know it. All you you can get is an optimal. Is a possible. You say a approximate is a function. So there are so many possible approximate functions. So machine learning's job is just try to find the optimal one. You try to find the optimal one. So therefore, they have you say, they have a, a bias, they have a variance, okay? And uh, this is a simple is a equation tell you if we make a bias is a, Area higher than the variance is a area will get a smaller. So now they have a bias variance is a dilemma. They have a variance. When I talk about the students, I mentioned that, like you say, a student want to make a, or a boy or a girlfriend, if he just want to make that, is a, a friend in his or her class, classmate uh, among his class. Now the advantage is the information is sufficient. He know all the classmates in her or his is a class very well. But the, the problem is he may not find his is a, or hers is a girlfriend or boyfriend in just the class, okay, the classmate among the class. Don't that have we say get the search space get larger, okay? Maybe it's the entire it's a school. Uh, that get larger. When you get a you say, search space get larger, the problem is uh, your information will get you say, smaller, okay? That's what we call the information entropy will come in, okay? Very, very important, okay? So that's why they have the best balance dilemma. So how we do that, okay? But usually, we say they say there are difficulties, the, the data, it's smaller. Now we are specifically mentioned that how to handle, they have two different types of small data. I will say give you more detail about this. And also the influence, okay? There are so many factors we call feature, okay? Maybe some of our friends call descriptors, attributors to me, 
I think they are more or less the same. Okay, so I just say simply call them features. Okay, that is an influence. Okay, factor. So they are high dimension, uh, very high dimension. And also the noise is big. What means the noise big? Uh, to me, I just want to mention the noise big means uh, the if you repeat to do the experiment, okay, their experiment scale is big. That's a, is a big noise, big noise. So now we are handle this data. We are handle this data. Now they have two critical issues. One is how to select this is a feature. Okay. Another is how associated with this is how we decided to a large space we will do our search. That is another is a, is a feature space. So keep that in mind. Now we handle this data. The solution usually is not unique. Okay, you can find a different is a model, the machine learning model that fit those data perfectly. Okay, so you have to keep that in mind. So now we talk about those small data. Here, what I mean is a small data, they have two kinds of small data. The first one is I schematically say show here, okay? The number of repeated testing is not enough due to greater say, scattering in the experiment results. So therefore the mean of the repeated testing results is not uh, statistically reliable. That is a problem. Okay, we do a summary. Just say where well, we do say I'm going to do ex experiment. You just do a summary actually. If you are say ordinary, that is say, the greater scattering. If you are number, of course, if uh, from city point of view, if you are say summary number approach infinity, that's always is true. But uh, we cannot do that. But we always handle is a small data. Another data is just as they call, actually this is a widely called that case is a sparse data. That is in machine learning. For this one, we do have some approach we can handle. It. The approach you already we call is a transfer learning and so on. How do you say, how to enhance those data? Then the, we have uh, so many different uh, technologies, machine learning is algorithm to handle this, okay? So this one, so even though data is smaller, but uh, they are reliable. So that is easy, okay? That is, uh, to me, it's relatively easy, okay? Uh, the challenge is uh, if their data is not you say, uh, reliable, what can we do? So now I think it's a loop, I say one approach. This is uh, by my, say, uh, Francis, uh, Professor Lukma. So this, uh, that is uh, Professor Xu Dezhen. Is uh, Professor Lukma is a former student. Now there is a publish that paper. So their goal that they, they propose the adaptive design. The goal in this is the article talk about how to make this dirty t small. Okay, how to make this dirty t small. So they have originally have 22 initial say, data. So now they are say they take that is a six is a features. Then their search space is roughly is roughly say eighty say hundred thousand they say alloys. That is a to me that is a very big. The search speed space is too big, but they because the initial data the number of their data is too small. So then every time. They can say suggested to do another four experiment. Okay, they can say go to into that. They do an iteration. So now in the you say the lowest is in the sixth iteration. We found that it's the lowest one, delta t. That's is in their supporting information. Okay, that I, I, I copied here. So I said okay, maybe we can do in a different way. I take all their data. We also put some constraint. We put some limit. We said that we already consider that it be two to R fission formation. We are not called this other type of Martin Seidig fission formation. Okay, now in this way, we reduce this, we move this five data out, then feature we just use the element. Okay, we use the three the alloy element. The target is the same. Further, I do is a, 
a decision tree, okay? The purpose to do a decision tree is to try to reduce this search space. It's a rich reduce the search space. That is the original one. So I put the delta T should be smaller than four Q, okay? Now then if that one, we get this, we put that, the finally we will get this, okay? Yeah, on this is a leaf, okay, on this. Uh, then we have a totally have a say, 35 data, okay. Then in the 35 data, you can see that the Gini index is uh, decreased. Then that indicate the information gain. So inside of the 35 see data, they have one data, I call that out there, that's very, very high. Okay, we have to specially say attention to the put on this data. Maybe they have some new mechanisms behind that. Maybe their experiment they have not done so well. Okay, so they keep that in mind. So I just remove for the time being. Uh, now we do this uh, similar, we use same machine learning algorithm. So that is uh, the published is in their paper. So that is a predicted number. That is uh, their actually experiment is measured. I use the same machine learning algorithm. We can predict another five. Okay, actually the predictions is uh, Delta T is lower than their predictions in Delta T. Okay, that's just one of the example. Uh, there, uh, another challenge is this, okay. We want to show you the same data can be explained by different machine learning model. Not just by machine learning model. Actually, they can explain that can be fit by different theoretical say, model. So that is uh, the model the formula proposed by Marshall and the law, okay, both are my very close friends. Okay, we are all working on some mechanical behavioral materials. So that's why I propose another model. From the equation, you can see they are totally different equation. Okay, I use the same experiment, okay, the same experiment, but the plot is why you based on this is the equation, another based on another equation. And then from the data fitting point of view, from the fitting, you cannot tell which one is better, which one is worse. They always fit perfect. Okay, so keep that in mind. Not machine learning can give you different results. Even you do a theory, theoretical study, based on your different assumption, they also can get a different results, a different formula. So keep that in mind. There are another example. So this is an uh, equation. Now they are all from my, say, this uh, Bear Nix, the very say, the famous is a professor at the Stanford University, another professor Gao, but you also working in Germany, probably Max Planck Institute. So they propose that is a famous is a equation. And based on this equation, they develop the, the string gradient plasticity. So when I see they are working on this small one, small one, at that time I said, ah, I should, maybe I should do something. So I propose another equation. You can see the equation looks also different from their Professor Nix and the Professor Gauss's formula. Okay, that's my equation. So now I ask my formula students, this is Wei Hua Xu, I ask him to collect all the data available at that time. Now here are just a few of them. One is fit by this equation, another fit by this equation, the total equation. Okay, now you can see that. So from the data fitting, you cannot tell which equation is better. Okay, they all divide that equation based on different uh, theoretical you say, assumption, a simplification, or keep that in mind, even you are do a survey, theoretical you say, study. Okay, so that's it, just I want to tell you say, if we do a uh, data, okay, driving the formula development, if you get a say, more equation, not a surprise, okay? So even though you do a purely theoretical study, you could go, maybe also get a say, different equations, okay? Keep that in mind. So now I come to, say, to this one. So this is actually one of my friends, it's a Professor Badat from Northwestern, he's a very, very famous uh, scientist, uh, and the Professor Hu from Australia, 
Though not they are argued to each other how to about this is a this is size dependent. Okay, there is a, actually, but that they have the classic work on side effect, okay, in fracture mechanics. So basically, when the size gets small, we think that it's a strength dominant. When they say size get bigger, I believe that there's a fracture mechanics will come in, okay, to do the prediction. So that is this very classic work. So the who are the one they also they call that the boundary effect model. Okay, when they say put this is a problem to me, they ask me to, to judge which one is better. Okay, now I'm doing say machine learning. I said, oh, I will not personal, we are not doing anything like a machine to do. So I do a machine learning. We use that is a basically top of three point bending. Three point bending, this is how to is explain the setup. That is, they are they have a pre notch, they have this is a sample size, they also have this height. Okay, we use all the data is from you say Professor Patat's data. That's you can see that is a small is a sample, this is a bigger sample. Okay, they have you say really a size effect there. So, and also the notch is nominated by that is a by this W, by the height. So we use the alpha. So you can see that this experiment data, even though you, you can see that this is repeat, that is a number of repeat testing, it's not so small. But however, the concrete is just so, the data is getting so big, okay, so big. So now if you, based on say linear fracture mechanics, then you should suppose you should get this. Uh, it's not, a, you're not satisfied this. Okay, based on this, I said I put that is the common sense. We all know that. Okay, because the data is small and the noise is big. So we put a say here, we all uh, agree. Okay, the standard derivation does not follow. Okay, in the common sense, the possible is the bigger defect exactly. Okay, the, and so on, based on this. Okay, so I put a say four hypotheses here. That is uh, the larger the concrete sample size is, the lower the strength will be. The larger the concrete sample size is, the small the variation will be. The deeper the pronounced length is, the lower the strength will be. The degree in data scattering should be decreased with the increase of pronounced length. This is a hypothesis, okay? Because they are, you take a look at their data, they don't follow this. They, they don't follow this. So therefore, I use the power law, a normal distribution, okay? That's the simplest one. We use the say, uh, power law and the normal distribution, we link them together, okay? Link them together. Then from here, because this is small data, you don't know there is a distribution. How the advantage when we propose this, the link the together normal distribution, okay, with this power law. Then we can, that means when we determine, for example, determine this is a probability density, we have used all the data, okay, including the different density sizes data. We will have used that. So that's why we can distribute, okay, their normal distribution, what's going on. Then we can determine this. All those, you say those uh, the, that we call that, you say those uh, parameters we introduced, uh, we determine that based on from the data, so we can determine their value. Okay, we can determine their value. Then we also can put the size pre notch length dependent uh, that is a normal distribution model. We'll do the same thing. Then we can use the statistical testing. Oh, sorry for there are some is a Chinese word, okay. But uh, it's just a statistical testing to say by the way, accept the data or not. So then we also do that, you say. So finally, we can say found the where model is really statically say accept, you say, most of accept, accept, you say two data. Okay, we put it, say, highlight in red. Okay, highlight in red. So now once you have this distribution, then you will say, know the, what's the really the, the value at the one percent here, it's one percent. Just you, you can take it. You, if you think it's too large, you can put it zero point one percent. 
So failure probability in the congruent streams, okay, then you can put it there. Their behavior is usually like this. Okay, then you can put the probability. Once you know that, then you can always say do it. So now the fracture properties, they have a tool. One we call say in fracture community, we call K1C, the fracture toughness. Another, while well, those is a crack propagation in front of the notch, they have a fracture, it's a property, they have the fracture processing zoom. Okay, what's the size of the zoom? So we use this final element to do a calculation, calculate the stress intensity factor. Then we put this is the fracture processing zoom. Then because we argue say, the K1C fracture toughness is a materials property. It's a constant. They only related to materials. So we put it there. Then we can that is away from the final the calculation. We have calculate the stress intensity factor. Then with the experimental data, we can determine what's the fracture toughness and what is the cracking proposition doing size. Okay, the delta A we introduce. Okay, so this uh, the results seems pretty good. Okay, this I uh, emphasize that. Okay, the concrete remarks uh, how do machine learning small data with bigger noise to me is still a great is a challenge. Okay. We, I hope it's more, more of our friends or colleagues worldwide that they can pay more attention to this. And uh, in my personal opinion, integrated domain knowledge with machine learning is the best approach. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Professor Tong Yi Zhang. Uh, so we still have a few minutes for the questions for this talk. Well, uh, I don't have a question, but I do have uh, some comment. I think uh, uh, Professor Tong Zhang's talk actually addresses the issue. So uh, in material science, in many researchers' own lab, so uh, it's very often we have a small data especially for experiment, right? It's because material data, uh, experiment data are generated, uh, that it's very expensive, right? So, uh, but now we, we have a, this data science uh, concept. So we, we need to rethink how to deal with this experiment data using the data of art, um, but uh, data science or, or there's a big data tools or even small data tools because they are, these this tools are not familiar uh, for material scientists before actually. So I think that's also a uh, direction or, or uh, uh, something we, we need to think in the field. I mean, not uh, because the big data is still, you know, not, not available to everybody or still ongoing. Uh, but we still, I think uh, that there are rooms to find the power of uh, statistical analysis uh, for the small data, and that will uh, benefit the material science. Well, that's my, my personal comment. So should we put more emphasis on this in, in, in the education as well? In, in let's say um, how we educate our undergraduates? Yeah, so I think it's important to tell the student. So for example, we are also teaching material science student. Now we emphasize a lot about this uh, uh, data science. So uh, about the machine learning, data mining, et cetera. So tell them this is really a independent, important tools you have to uh, learn and uh, use in the future in your own uh, material science uh, research. So I, I think the students should uh, learn this as a basic tools, just like uh, computational tools or experiment tools. So data science too is a uh, new independent tools. Still, uh, I'm not sure uh, the other place, but in China, my personal experience, still people kind of mix computational tools and the data science tools. They think they are the same. While they are both use computers for sure, but 
they don't do a uh, real experiment, but actually uh, they are different. So we know. So I think uh, should uh, uh, educate people uh, learn more about the data science. They they have they, they do have independent tools, uh, uh, concept, and uh, application uh, cases. So yeah, so education is still need need uh, and for the material science. And if I add a little bit more comment, I think one example Professor Tong Yi mentioned is noise. So in experiment data, there are a lot of errors. There's noisy data. So these errors, uh, well, it can be enemy of the data science, but sometimes uh, may be useful. So how, how to deal with the, this is the common, uh, uh, problem noisy uh, experiment data. So the how how to handle this from a uh, data science point of view. Uh, uh, I think recently, uh, I, as far as I know, uh, Professor uh, Xu in 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 China, he uh, used this error, put this error into the uh, data analysis and make some progress. Uh, personally, in my personal group, I also try put this error back into the feature uh, as input to the machine learning model, but it turns out it's, um, it's, it's not successful. But we are learning things. I mean, this the, we need to learn the nature of the data and uh, to see uh, how to uh, deal with this sort of things. Okay, that, that's my comment. So, uh, so then my point is, so we are, I think as material data, we are facing challenge from not both big data and small data. Because for the small data, even more challenging because we don't have a many data, then how, how can we dig out uh, useful information? Uh, I think that, that also rely on the, the advanced the algorithm also, uh, domain knowledge. We need to input the domain knowledge to expand the, the value of the data. So it's not just the number, so the size of the data, also the quality, and also how to uh, take good advantage of limited data. I think that's also sort of uh, things we need to uh, address, also pay attention. Well, this is my, my personal uh, opinion. Another issue, okay, maybe she will, she will try to use more attention, all yours attention. So we usually we do, you say, uh, no, no matter you do, you say more physical oriented, uh, chemical oriented, uh, maybe like means mechanical behavior oriented, you see research. So in our research in, in my half is life, maybe most of life is research. I really believe with the model I developed, Okay, we think that is always true because I based on some assumption, we say we, we, I love the formula I develop, I derive. Okay, so I want to try my best to argue my model is correct, my theory is correct. So, in that sense, that means that I'm very biased my model. But uh, from you see, I from the data science point of view, that is not this issue. The data is machine learning, as I mentioned here. They're assuming there's a big assumption. They are assuming the true okay, correlation is not available. All you can find is the optimal uh, approximate you see, a formula, a, a correlation, no matter it's analytic or non-analytic. Okay, this is a, the, the approach is somehow are, are different. Okay, so now we are all working in this area. Uh, we have to pay more attention to this issue. Okay, so now I think it's time for the next talk. So let's thank Professor Zhang again.